So the other day when I was making my last video on the song Josie, I had to write out a chart for it because I used it in the video. This is the actual chart. I have some shorthand going on here where it says E to D because of the first two notes and then SN means single notes. This is not only shorthand for myself, right? Because it starts out with this, with those two single notes, E to D, but it's a way to show you what I'm doing. And it reminded me of when I was a guitar teacher here in Atlanta. So I moved here in November, beginning of no November of 1994. And the first job I had, I was working at Blockbuster Music. I've told this story on the channel a bunch of times. And I worked in the classical music section. I also worked playing CDs for people. I'd open up CDs, place in a thing. They'd, they'd listen on headphones and decide if they wanted to buy it again. And then we would carefully close it, hand it to them, they'd go purchase it. Around the first week that I was here, one of the guys that I was living with that was a musician, it was all musicians, said, you should go try and get a job at this music store in Buckhead called Buckhead Music. I drove by it the other day. I was like, okay. So I look up where it is and everything, look on a map. There was no phones or anything at the time. So I get in my Honda Civic and I drive up to this place, Buckhead Music. And I go in and it's Buckhead Music. So there are two teepees inside of it. And I thought, okay, this is pretty weird. These are like 20 foot teepees. It's a commercial space. And there's a guy there named David working there. So I go and I start talking to him. I said, yeah, I'm looking for a job teaching guitar lessons. He says, have you taught guitar lessons before? I said, I was actually a college professor for, for years and I've taught plenty of guitar lessons. He said, you know, our guitar teacher just quit and I have a bunch of people that want guitar lessons that have inquired about it. So why don't we do this? Why don't you come in on Thursday and I'll set up some lessons for, for you. So I call him back on Thursday. He says, um, I've got about six lessons set up. I said, wow. That's pretty cool. So I'm still working at Blockbuster and I come in and I teach these lessons in this teepee. Now the teepee, you go in, you move the, 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 the doorway thing, it's just this fabric, like burlap. And you go in, there's two chairs and there's a round table. So I'm sitting on one side, the students on the other side, the round table on the other side. So on that round table, I had music paper or note paper, tab paper, whatever it was. And this is what I would write down the lessons on. So, and I had a cassette player. People would come in, I want to learn this song. These were not beginners. I had a lot of beginners too, but these were not beginners, the first students I had. One of them was my friend Paige, who I'm still really good friends with. She was, she was one of my first students. I want to learn this song. Okay, what is it? I put it in the cassette player. Sometimes it was songs that I knew, but many times it was songs that I didn't know at all. Now, in the 80s, I was in a jazz coma. So really from 1981 through 1989 or so, I listened to mainly jazz and I went to school for jazz studies. Now I did listen to rock records and things like that, but I wasn't listening to every different genre of music. I would listen to things that, that were big artists like the police, for example, that were big in the late seventies. And then I kept listening to them through there. A lot of the stuff I'm hearing for the first time. So they would come in, I put the tape in, I'd listen to it, and I would write it down, whatever it was. I'd write out the chord changes, I'd write out tab, and I had never really experienced tab, but I knew what it was, because people weren't, there were no books and there was no internet at the time. So you just, okay, this is tab, this is how people learn. Start writing things down, and it would take me about five minutes to write a tune down, like Josie, all that stuff that, all these weird, you know, I figured that stuff out the other day before the video. And it took me five minutes to actually write the chart out. But here's the interesting thing. When I wrote the chart out for the people because I was teaching it, I turned the piece of paper around because this is what I did when I was teaching at Ithaca. And I wrote from the bottom right-hand corner up to the top left-hand corner. And I wrote everything upside down. I don't know why. I just got used to doing that in lessons because it was easier for students to learn that. As a matter of fact, one of my students that I would write charts out for and write them upside down is Keith Williams from 5 Watt World. As a matter of fact, in one of his videos, he showed some of my charts that I wrote back in the 80s. Then he asked for a piece of staff paper, which he told me to bring to the lesson, and started writing rapidly in pencil. He made sure I could play through the chords to get through a 251, and then handed me the handwritten changes to all the things you are, and sent me home to practice. Therein followed an intense year of lessons with Rick. 
So I taught one day a week and then two days a week and then three days a week. And finally, after three months, I quit my job at Blockbuster because I kept reducing days. And by probably February, I was teaching 50 students a week. So I went and I was doing the math on that. This is 52 weeks a year and this never stopped. It was 50 students a week from really all through 1995, 96, 97, 98, and halfway through 1999 when my band got signed. And I started producing later on in 1999 full time. And so that's well over 10,000 guitar lessons I taught. I had bass students and stuff too, but I taught songs in every one of those lessons. I had a student named Tommy. Tommy liked punk rock, so it'd be like Bad Religion, No Effects, Less Than Jake, Social Distortion, Black Flag, Green Day, he would like Minor Threat, any punk rock song, and sometimes it'd be the whole record. If it was Social Distortion, he loved Social Distortion, and we would learn record after record after record, every song on it. Then I have another person come in that liked grunge. Grunge was big. This is 1995. Soundgarden was putting out records still. Kurt Cobain had died, but people wanted to learn Nirvana and Pearl Jam and, and Stunt Tumble Pilots and Smashing Pumpkins and Alice in Chains. So I would teach every song off Dirt and I would teach every song off Super Unknown and every song off of Pearl Jam 10, everything, right? And so I knew these songs and records intimately. I knew how to play everything. I knew the solos. Then I'd have people that would come in that were more advanced and they'd want to learn Larry Carlton solos. Or we'd learn every solo off Frampton Comes Alive. Or we'd learn every solo, we learn Stevie Ray Vaughan solos. Whatever it was. And I would tab it out in the lesson and I would teach it to them. Sometimes the lessons would take two weeks to go through a tune if it was really complex. My ear was so developed, and this is the thing about ear training that's so important. It's like you should be able to figure out these songs and write them down. People don't say, oh, Rick, you played Josie wrong, because I'm not going to play Josie wrong. And I'm not being egotistical. I've just done this for so many years, you know, 45 years of being a musician and teaching all these songs just developed my ear. But what else it did that I didn't realize was, you know, I'm thinking about all these classic rock songs, all the Led Zeppelin songs I taught, ACDC songs, Beatles songs, Rolling Stone songs, the Who songs. It prepared me for producing because I was familiar with parts, learning how these guitar parts work together. Because I'd be like, you know, for those about to rock, it's actually two different guitar parts. There's one part on this side that's going, you know, and then there's another part on the other side. So I would teach both parts. And it started teaching me about arranging for rock tunes. So when I became a producer, I had this incredible wealth of things to draw upon where I knew all the parts to all these famous songs. I knew the lyrics, I knew the melodies, I knew the guitar parts, the bass parts, and I knew the drum parts too. And then in 2016, I started my YouTube channel. Well, at the beginning of my YouTube channel, I'm drawing upon all the stuff that I learned in college, all the jazz things, all the advanced theory, and then the, the concepts that I developed on my own afterwards. And I had my Beato book to work on and I taught modes and I taught, you know, things about all, all advanced theory. But then four years ago in January, I started my What Makes This Song Great series. And it occurred to me, I really taught probably about 12,000 guitar lessons, but I taught thousands and thousands of songs. So when I started that, I was able to go through and teach these songs and make these videos because I already understood how to play all the songs. Then I made videos like the top 20 acoustic guitar intros of all time. Some of my friends were like, when did you learn those? I said, well, I mean, a lot of them I learned back in the 70s. Then I made the top 20 guitar solos of all time. When did I learn those? Well, once again, I learned them when I was growing up and the other ones I taught when I was a guitar teacher. Now, I also taught beginning guitar students literally kids 10 years old eight years old i would actually say okay no you have to put your fingers like this and i would teach them e minor a minor c d g b minor teach them their first bar chords then i teach them power chords then we'd start with simple riffs and we would learn songs that way and then some of them went on to go to music school after five years some of these kids that were beginners i taught and they became music students, some of which are actually musicians today, professional musicians. Really, those five years were the preparation. Think about it. I think about my good friend, Marty Schwartz. People can go and look at Marty's things for how to play songs, but this is before YouTube. So I was like Marty Schwartz before Marty Schwartz. 
I was teaching students like every single song that had come out from the 60s on, pretty much. I had students that only learned Beatles songs. Or I had students that hated the Beatles and liked the Stones. So we would only learn Stone songs. Honky Tonk Woman, Jumpin' Jack Flash, Angie, you name it. That was really instructive. It was probably the best thing that I ever did, other than going to school for music. So between those two things, my YouTube channel was about me teaching those 50 students a week where I made 500 bucks a week, which was great money. It's pretty much what I was making as a college professor. It was hard work though. But ultimately, it really paid off when I see the the interest and the What Makes This Song Great series and all my top 20 list series. When I make these videos, I'm drawing from this wealth of knowledge from then. That's all for now. Don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell, and leave a comment. Check out my new Quick Lessons Pro guitar course that just came out. Also, the Beato book, if you want to learn about music theory, that's how you do it. And check out my Beato ear training course at beatoeartraining.com. And don't forget, if you want to support the channel even more, think about becoming a member of the Beato Club. Thanks so much for watching.